In 1905, a remarkable story was published in the New York World, which was a newspaper based out of the New York area at the time. Having just celebrated the Christmas season, I thought it was timely to share the tale, though you're probably already familiar with it. Written by O. Henry, whose real name was William Sidner Porter, he writes about a couple living through a most difficult time just before Christmas. Barely a dollar to their name. The wife in this story, her name is Della Young, and she visits a local hairdresser who buys Della's long hair. With the $20, she buys a platinum pocket watch chain for her husband's Christmas present. Later, as they were together, she confessed that she sold her hair to buy the watch chain. Jim, the husband, then gives Della her gift a set of ornamental combs which he bought after selling, you guessed it, his pocket watch. Per the story, neither Jim or Della were upset, as it only emphasized the links that they would go in showing their dedication to each other. While the gifts were a gesture of sacrifice and selflessness, it was the act behind the gifts that really showed how far Della and Jim were willing to give of themselves to each other. And while the gift of the Magi is fiction, allegedly written at Pete's Tavern, which is a great pub in New York if you're ever in the area, the story of Della and Jim pulled at the heartstrings of millions long before the Hallmark Channel aired its first series. So, currency... I asked this question in last week's episode, part one of this two-part series of Understanding You. If you haven't checked out last week's episode, please, please pause this and give that one a spin first. It will be far less confusing. But I ask, what is your currency? Did you make a list last week? Did you look at it at the start of your day? What did you learn that you needed emotionally? Was it gifts, like in the story, the gift of the Magi? Is your currency someone lending a hand or someone playing the role of your biggest cheerleader? What is your currency? Yeah, but Chad, Jim and Della is a a fictional story. Like, no one acts like that these days. Well, perhaps if we sat down for a few minutes and started our emotional me list, we would have more Jim. Mandela's. It may not be 1908, but I can say with certainty that when it comes to the desires of the heart, it's much simpler than we would ever imagine. So, let's find out. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. I know last week we talked about understanding you, realizing your needs, what feeds you emotionally, what is it that's life-giving to you personally. And I hope you took the time to self-reflect and ask some of these questions of yourself. And I have to be honest, even doing this for myself, it was kind of hard because we almost feel embarrassed as, you know, wow, why am I thinking so much about me? But they're sincerely needed if we're wanting to learn about ourselves Now, I'd like to try something with you. Close your eyes for me. This isn't a meditation or anything, but I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to give you a minute of silence after these next questions, okay? Get comfy. You're in a good spot. All right, eyes closed. Think of one person you're close with. Someone that means a lot to you, be it a spouse, be it a brother or a sister, best friend, Just one person. Okay, you have them in your mind. Great. Eyes still closed. What is their currency? Not what you think or want it to be, but what is their own currency? Have you ever thought about it? What feeds their soul? What brings a smile to their face every time? I'm going to give you some time to think. (laughs) 
Slowly, let's open our eyes. Notice your breath. Take a slow inhale, a slow exhale. This is a lot of self-reflection and then other reflection, looking at others and trying to learn them. Take the list you wrote last week and with that person in mind, go through what you believe their currency is. Last week was all about understanding you, understanding your needs. This week, we turn it out. It's all about understanding someone else. Their currency is praise, you say. Oh, why is that? Well, because everyone likes to be praised. I mean, that's my currency. It's what makes me feel good. So it's probably theirs too. Well, is it? Do you know that for sure? It's convenient for us to think our currency is someone else's, but what if it's not? Here, let me put it this way. Pre-COVID, my travels around the world as a concert pianist were pretty intense. Um, there's a really great app that tells me how many flights I took to how many countries, how many miles, so on and so forth. In 2019, I flew just shy of 85,000 miles, which according to the app, is the equivalent to three and a half times around the world. So it was a lot. Now, during one trip in particular, I had just finished a two-week tour in Europe. Germany, France, Netherlands, Belgium. And on my way home, I decided to stop in Iceland to see a friend who happens to be another pianist before I headed back to the States. Reykjavik is a most beautiful place, by the way, so if you ever have the chance to visit please go. So after seeing my friend, I wanted to pick up a few souvenirs for my wife and kids, and I played the role of a tourist in Reykjavik. Now, having found a great store, I selected a few things and was ready to check out, going up to the counter. Oh, so sorry, the person at the counter said, just cash, cash only. Oh, okay, no worries, no worries. To which I began to pull out the euros. I had carried with me all through Europe. And while I had euros on hand, Iceland's currency is Icelandic krona, not euros, not US dollar, not anything that I had on me. I was kindly directed to a local cash machine. I withdrew what was needed, which was Icelandic krona, returned to the store, purchased said items to which I stuffed into an already overstuffed luggage, but that's beside the point. But I had currency on me. I had currency I'd used with ease for the past two weeks because it so happened the currency I had while in Europe was the currency that was accepted, the euro. It was an exchange to which both parties were happy. The wine shop in Paris spoke the language of euro currency. The t-shirt shop in Reykjavik, eh, not so much. I had to learn what the store owner in Reykjavik wanted in order for us to share an experience together. He wanted to make me happy with what he offered, and I, in return, wanted to make him happy and paying for what he offered. But it wasn't until I learned what he needed before both of us understood each other, understood our currencies. So, returning to the list you wrote last week for yourself, take this list and apply it to someone you want to sow into, someone you share a life with, someone you truly want to relate to, but maybe haven't quite figured out how. What's the missing key? The good thing is you don't have to go great lengths of selling your hair or your beloved pocket watch to show your devotion to someone. I mean, unless you really want to cut your hair and sell it. But if you listen closely, close enough, they'll tell you. And if they don't verbally tell you, their actions will. Their demeanor, their countenance, and if all else fails, just ask. Hey, silly question, but what fills your tank? I know it may seem silly, but let me ask. How many people have ever sat you down and asked you the same question? One, maybe two? 
how many people do you wish would ask you that question? Um, everybody? <laughs> it would make life so much easier. Well, here's your chance to be the friend, to be the person that somehow always knows what the other person needs and always at the right moment. Their life will change. Your life will change. All because you took the time to ask, hey, um, what is your currency? I'd really like to know. One simple question that will emotionally enrich you and them in ways that only a true friend could ever do. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.